So welcome everyone to the MNG Capstone Overview and Student Team Panel Discussion. This is a friendly reminder that this session will be recorded and shared on the new admin website. So I encourage you to check back on the website in a few days. So on today's agenda, we're gonna do some introductions of the Capstone program staff that are here today. And then we will share with you all the philosophy behind what Capstone is all about. So we'll share with you what skills you learn on your Capstone project. We also have a sneak peek of projects that are listed for the next cohort. And we will also share how the selection process works. And then we will lead into the capstone student team panel discussion. And then we do ask that you wait towards the end of the presentation to ask your questions. And then don't go anywhere because after Q&A, we will break out into small Zoom rooms so that you have an opportunity to connect with your peers that are here today in this space. So I'm Claire Trias and I am the Student Affairs and Capstone Advisor. And I am joined today by my colleague, Dr. Jennifer Mangold, who is our Chief Innovation and Learning Officer. And she is an engineer by trade. And I am also joined by Lauren Takata, who is a current student in the Mechanical Engineering Department and you will be hearing from us throughout this presentation. So now I will hand it over to Jennifer to share with us what Capstone is all about. Thank you, Claire. Um, hi, everyone. As Claire mentioned, so I am a mechanical engineer by training. I did my graduate work here at UC Berkeley. So. Several years ago, I was in your same place trying to decide what school to go to for graduate work. Um, so really excited to share today about um, the capstone process, um, what it looks like, what you can learn, how it prepares you for your career. So one of the things I like to think about is, you know, we've worked hard to develop the Fung Institute mission over the past couple of years. And it's really, it's on our website. Um, but it's creating inclusive leaders who solve the world's problems through innovation, technology, and collaboration across boundaries. And I really think Capstone is at the heart of that and really where you can apply those things. And, um, you know, you're going to be working in teams and across different fields and interdisciplinary, um, leveraging technology and innovation, and really kind of making your own way here um, to set you up for your career. So... Um, as the slide shows, innovation is at the heart of the capstone experience. This is um, really important, right? When you think about engineers, the problems that we need to solve, what's kind of facing society and how we tackle those. Um, and it's really on you and your team to take initiative and build something new, um, which is really exciting. Um, it can also be really scary. And so one of the things that is exciting about the capstone is that it's framed within um, a safe space, right? Because you're learning. This is yet preparing you for the real world. And we want you to have a place to experiment, explore, develop, um, and evaluate new concepts or technologies based on your particular project, which, like as Claire said, we'll share some more um, at the end. But there's really no right answer or solution. Um, you also have multiple stakeholders, which we'll talk about, so um, that have competing demands and how do you um, work together to meet those and, and find compromises and kind of create, carve out what the solution will look like because um, your advisors don't know the answer necessarily, right? So it's really you kind of taking that initiative um, with your team. And working on something that matters, which I'll share as uh, some of the projects that we've worked on in the past um, and that's kind of facing society. So within that, there's three principles around the capstone experience. The first one really is experiential learning. Um, and this is where you think about learning by doing. So it's very different than undergrad in the sense of 
and our undergraduate degrees really prepare us to, um, you know, we show that we can learn knowledge, um, we can apply that knowledge, but it's really kind of on a more narrow path, right? There's some boundaries within that. Um, and you're kind of guided through that, through that. So grad school is different in the sense of you're really kind of making your own way. And again, as I mentioned, there's not um, a right answer. So you're exploring, you um, might have to pivot in your project, all of these kind of real world experiences that you will apply in your career. And so capstone is one way you're doing that because you're gonna have you know, a title of the project that you're working on. So you're gonna have this kind of problem scoped out. Um, but you'll run into challenges. You'll have to like pivot, right? The data might not be what you thought it was. So very much like what will happen in your careers. Um, so it's really cool that you get that experience um, here, kind of like I said, with a lot of support structures, which I'll talk about, um, and in a team environment. So what, what are you learning during that? The next thing is the technical challenge, right? And so we have projects um, that are from a variety of fields. Um, and I want you all to think as you um, think about coming to Berkeley and looking at the potential projects, one way to pick one, and it'll be great because you're gonna hear from our panelists later, but as you really think about what skills you bring to the table, so where are your strong points? And then what skills you want to be able to learn while you're here? And that really helps you frame what type of project. Um, a lot of the skills that you'll be learning on the project, um, even though they might be focused in a certain area or project or field of study, a lot of them are applicable across fields um, and across industries. Um, and so it's less important that this is like, you know, you pick the perfect project, because again, the skills are transferable and it's just a way for you to show that um, while you're here at Berkeley, and then also when you're looking for your next job. A lot of the projects range from robotics for disaster relief, autonomous vehicles, fintech solutions. Um, we want to really have like a broad swath of projects because we know we have students that come from many different di disciplines and interests. Um, and then this is also the part where obviously the capstone has to meet your technical degree requirement. So this is where you're applying that technical knowledge that you learned in undergrad um, to a real world solution, which is really exciting. The third principle is teaming. And again, this is where you dive deeper into the real world in the sense of you learn a lot of um, what I like to call intangible skills. So the ones that really set you apart from your peers, um, you're learning communication and project management and um, conflict resolution and inclusive teaming. All of these really things that make you a leader in the engineering field. And we have industry and companies that come back to us um, time and time again that talk about like those are the skills that they're really looking for and set you apart. Um, to some extent, everybody could be learned how to code or you know manipulate data. So while we want you to be strong in those technical skills, the leadership and teaming component is very important. And to help support that, um, here you'll be taking classes in the fall and the spring um, that focus on communication, project management, as well as teaming um, to help your uh, team progress throughout the project. Because that's also real world challenges. Again, you're gonna run into challenges with stakeholders or disagreements on a team about how you wanna move forward. Um, that is all normal part of the process of working on um, engineering projects. Um, and so I think it's really cool that you get to practice this here in this space while you have kind of a really good robust uh, support network. So I kind of talked about the three principles. Um, we're going to go a little bit into the logistics and like, what does this really look like? Uh, we have two types of projects, um, industry-led and, fac uh, and um, university-led or faculty-led. So the first ones I'll talk about is the university-led projects. So these are supervised by College of Engineering faculty from across the um, different fields of engineering and working on um, an internal project. And you could be working with grad students, postdocs, or, or, or faculty within this space, um, but it's really framed 
within the university system. Oftentimes faculty do partner uh, with industry, so that might be part of the project, but it's really dependent on the specific project. The next one is industry-led projects. Um, and this is really exciting because um, we want to provide these to you all because they're um, very, a lot of the students want to work on an industry project. Uh, we have, again, across fields and different disciplines, um, different types of skills that are required. We try to get a good range. Um, and they can be international corporations all the way to startups. So we'll have this highlighted um, in our final um, project marketplace where you'll we'll, can look at all the projects that come in because you really want to think about what experience you want. So, and we'll highlight this again in some language that we share with you all um, because as we're learning, you know, you're going to get a different experience if you're working with a startup, a, you know, international organization or, um, you know, or a, a faculty. And so really just thinking about what kind of experience you want um, from that. And they're all valuable. And no matter what you choose, you're going to get really good experience. But that, that's another thing to kind of be thinking about. Um, and so for the next slide, it shows um, some of the different partners that we've had. So we're really lucky being in the Bay Area. Um, so we have a really strong um, startup and tech ecosystem here. Um, so this gives an example of some of the different projects and partners that, that we've worked on um, in the past and some currently as well. Um, the next option is um, proposing your own project. So um, we actually have um, a couple of projects that are running this semester that um, had started out as a student project. Now it's an MNG alumni project, and which is really cool. Um, so we've had some success in this area. If you're interested in this, you can reach out to me and you'll have my email address and I can kind of work with you on that because uh, we do want to make sure it's structured enough for, you know, you're going to be have students working on it with you. So you need to make sure we have the resources, the skills, the scope kind of worked out. I'm happy uh, to work on that with you all. Um, but we do want to make sure it's like robust enough for that. Um, and we have other um, alums and students that have done this. So if you kind of are interested in seeing how it worked for them, um, we can also connect you there. So the next slide shows, or yeah, so this wraps it up and then we're going to go into logistics. But what's really cool is no matter what your experience, you're working with like world-renowned faculty on really cool tech and research, or you're working on with these amazing companies um, that are kind of working on cutting edge. So I think, and working across disciplines, that's another cool point that I didn't mention necessarily in the teaming. It's not necessarily you're, you're gonna be working with all mechanical engineers or all electrical engineers, right? So you really have um, to be able to work across disciplines, um, build skill sets, communication, leadership, um, you know, which mimics what's going to be happening in, in your careers. So before we pass it on to the panel, I'll go over a quick logistics about like, how does this all work and how do you get placed on a project? Um, so this is really kind of the, the flow. So March, as Claire mentioned, we're going to be sharing the Preliminary project list, um, we're working all the time to get more. We obviously base that on um, our student numbers to make sure there's a really nice list for y'all to choose from. Um, in August, we'll share our final um, project list, which will also have more detailed descriptions. Right now, it's just titles to see, um, get you interested in the different types that we offer, but there'll be a more um, project brief that you can dig into. Um, then we have an info fair where you're able to meet with different faculty and the industry partners and ask questions and they're able to meet you. And then you want to, you're going to select what your preferences of projects. And then we do our best to match you on those projects. It is similar to a job application because the faculty and industry partners also have some say, right? So they're going to see if you're skills and interests really align with the project um, that you can be a part of. And, um, you know, every year we're able to get students um, 
on at least one of their top three projects, which is which is really cool. And then September, we want you to launch. You know, it's a, a nine month program. So really want you to dig in. And the earlier you can scope that out um, in the beginning, the more successful your team is. So um, that is pretty much um, the selection process. Always here if you have extra questions. Um, the, the other piece that we're carving out too, um, as Claire mentioned, Lauren, one of our capstone ambassadors, which is really exciting. We've never had them before. Getting a lot of feedback from them of how to improve the process. Um, and, and one of the things here is we're carving out some policies around, you know, making sure that you um, get on a project that you like and also able to stay there. And so, one of these things here is really wanting to make sure that you have all the information that you need to be able to be matched. Um, because again, if you get switched on projects later and months later, it really interferes with your experience as well. So um, we allow you to um, change projects, but only in a very exceptional cases. Um, so we are thought that we gave you all the information if you wanna ask things before um, that we cover that, but wanting to make sure you're aware of this policy as well. So I'm gonna um, pass it over to Claire who can introduce the student panel. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, I'm gonna ask our panel to please turn on their video. And while they are doing that, I want to share with you all that I'm very delighted to have our current students here today. So we have representation from a faculty-led project Shane and Lauren are on faculty-led projects. And then we have a team of five here today that are on an industry, industry project. So before we dive into some questions, I'm gonna have the panel introduce themselves by sharing their name, the department concentration, and also the undergraduate school that they attended. So we'll start off with Lauren first. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I am majoring in mechanical engineering. Um, and I'm working, actually I'm working also on an industry project with Siemens Energy, um, but I did my undergraduate studies at the University of Texas in Austin. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here and happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Lauren. Shane? Hello, my name is Shane. Um, I'm majoring in mechanical engineering also with concentration of control for robotics and automated autonomous systems. I got my undergrad degree from Real Summer Institute of Technology in Indiana, which is also a major of mechanical engineering. And it's my honor to be here to answer the questions you got for you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shane. Billy? everyone, my name is Billy, and I'm currently studying uh, mechanical engineering at Berkeley as well, focusing on controls of robotics and autonomous system. And um, back in UW, uh, back in undergrad, I went to UW Seattle to do uh, electrical and computer engineering. So I'm, ha I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you, Billy. Brian? Hey everyone, my name is Brian Tran, and I'm in the mechanical engineering department with a concentration in product design. And I went to the College of New Jersey for my undergrad. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here and meet everybody. Go Bears. Yes, go Bears. Flora? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Flora, and I'm now studying in mechanical engineering with the specialization in product design as well. So I spent my undergrad in Pennsylvania in Lehigh University studying mechanical engineering and uh, product design is what I want to go for in my future career. It's my honor to be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Flora. Ethan? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ethan. I am studying bioengineering with a concentration in biomedical engineering design here at the MNG. Um, but uh, in my undergrad, I also went to UC Berkeley and I studied bioengineering, mechanical engineering. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, I can't wait to answer your questions. Thank you, Ethan. Sadant? Hi, everyone. I am Sadant. I am pursuing my master's in mechanical engineering at Berkeley. And prior to this, I completed my undergraduate education at, in India at Punjab Engineering College. Thank you, Sadant. 
So before I have Lauren uh, answer the first question, I just wanna say that as Jennifer mentioned earlier, we recruited two student ambassadors, Capstone ambassadors this year. And this is a role that we will plan to continue for the next cohort. So this is an opportunity to look forward to. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the first question. So Lauren, can you please share with us what excites you about being a Capstone Student Ambassador? Yeah, so as Claire mentioned, this was a new role. So I think being one of the first people in this um, position is really exciting in that there's a lot of creativity within the role. Um, I'm able to provide a lot of feedback to both Claire and Jennifer on not only my experiences, but my cohort's experience. I think as a student, um, you know, you just have different viewpoints um, and it's really cool to have the opportunity to share that and try to make a difference within the program. Um, but overall, I just really like to be involved um, within MNG. I think it's a great opportunity to connect with my cohort, um, you know, program staff and just work with really passionate people um, and kind of, you know, get the most out of the program. Thank you, Lauren. The next question is for Shane and Brian. Starting with Shane, can you please share an overview about your capstone project? Sure. So um, my team's working on the autonomous driving technology applied on the AWS defreezer vehicle by using a sense of fusion of ladder camera, uh, error reduction of common filter, and control algorithm of model predictive control. And our goal of autonomous driving project is to achieve a target following, something like a police is chasing a car in the freeway, when, of course, we need a um, obstacle avoidance within the control theory. And yeah. That's basically all. Thank you, Shane. Brian? So I'm working with Ethan, Billy, Flora, and Sedan, plus five other members. So we're actually a team of 10. And our capstone is uh, industry-led with a startup company called Goji, as seen in the previous slides. And the official title and goal of the project is to improve the industrial design and real-time controls of a scaled-down omnidirectional treadmill paired with VR. And the purpose of the treadmill is to enhance physical therapy and rehabilitation in patients afflicted with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or recovering from a stroke. And the project is iterative. So there was a team last year, and we're basically building off of that work and trying to decrease height, noise, and the overall footprint of the treadmill. Thank you, Brian. This next question is for Billy and Lauren. And we'll start with Billy. So we have a lot of great faculty-led and industry-led projects that we offer in August. And please hang tight because, oh, well, actually, Ashley already shared it in the chat, but that's great for you to look over. Um, but so how did you decide what capstone project you wanted to be on with all of these great options? Billy? So as you know, the, um, there could be a hundred of projects to choose from and it's very uh, daunting in the beginning. So what I would do is I would uh, narrow my list down to the few projects that I'm actually interested in. And then I would arrange my time to attend uh, the capsule info fair and to attend the office hours that the advisors might have. And I would go there and uh, listen to, uh, they talk about the, um, the projects and then ask questions about the projects that I can understand more about the project. And then I could, I could rent my pro uh rent, rank those projects based on my interest and the the match with my background and then I could uh I could finalize the list and submit the form. So that's how I, I chose my my projects. Thanks, Billy. Lauren. Yeah, I agree a lot with what Billy said. There are great opportunities to learn more about certain projects that you're interested in. For me, I was really torn between two projects. One was um, faculty led within the fluid mechanics department and mechanical engineering. And then one was industry based with Siemens Energy. Um, both, I'm, both are focused on renewable energy and technology, which is why I kind of want to go into what I'm focusing on. Um, so it really came down to prioritizing what 
I wanted to get out of the project. And like Jennifer mentioned earlier in the meeting, you really have to think about what your skills are, what your strengths are, um, apply that to what the projects are, kind of see if there's a match, but also looking at what new skills do you want to learn or new um, you know, skills and techniques, whatever um, you want to get out of the project. So it's really just prioritizing that. And in the end, I chose the industry-based project with Siemens Energy. Um, I really had great communication and conversation with the advisor. And I just felt like overall, it matched a lot of what I was looking for in a project. Thank you, Lauren. So this next question is for Ethan and Shane. Starting with Shane, can you please share with us what are you finding valuable as you're working on your capstone project? Um, yes, so um, especially when it comes to the weekly meeting with the stakeholders, I feel pretty excited that I can share my results of innovation and research with others. Also, during the process, I can train my capabilities in my leadership, evaluate the whole team's health and the project health, and my flexibility when something unexpected happens. Like for my case, the hardware was not functional as we expected, and we need to you know, pivot the day to fit this schedule. Yeah. And Shane, you are on a team of three, correct? Yeah, team of three. Yeah, and Shane is representing the team today. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, thank you. Ethan? Hi, yeah, I think something I find really valuable working on the capstone project, as uh, Brian mentioned earlier, uh, we are a group of 10. So it takes a lot of coordination for all of us to really work together towards a single goal. And with a project as advanced as ours, where we have to work with controls and um, mechanical design, uh, it's really interesting that we all have to split up the work and essentially coordinate at the same time, as well as like balancing um, our time as students. And I find that time management and team coordination to be incredibly valuable from the Capstone project. And I can't wait to apply it in real life, like outside in professional. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan. And I just want to quickly mention that, um, as Ethan mentioned, they are a team of 10. However, they were broken up into sub teams because it is more effective for teams to be broken up into smaller sizes. And the ideal team size, as Jennifer mentioned, is three to five. All right, this next question is for Sadant and Flora. Starting with Sadant, can you please share with us what strategies and tools help your team effectively work together? For us, the strategy of working together in a team of 10 has been twofold. Firstly, we made sure that we had clear and well-defined roles and responsibilities as a team. So we broke down our team into based on the functional aspects of the project and assigned responsibilities to each person. And each of us had roles and responsibilities that we had to work on. And secondly, the more important thing is that we had regular check, we have regular check-ins and status updates on how the project is shaping up. We have regular weekly meetings uh, as a group as a group of 10. And in addition to all of this, we have a Gantt charts so as to make sure that we, uh, our project uh, is able to meet the goals and the timelines which are desirable. Thank you, Sadant. Flora? Um, yeah, as we are in the same team, um, I would mentioned the same thing like the uh, Monday standard meeting is, is, uh, is especially very important to our like uh, team progress. We can share like what we have done in the past week, what we will do in the last week. And also we can see what others are facing like problems or challenges to be like helping with each other in time to keep the progress going. Thank you, Flora. So this next question is for all of the panelists. So the question is, the capstone info fair that takes place in early August is a time for students to ask the capstone project advisor questions about what their project is all about. So what advice would you give incoming students and on how to make their time at the capstone info fair the most beneficial? 
And we will go ahead and start with Lauren. Yeah, so this is a great question. I think the info fair is a really great opportunity, you know, again, to learn more about the projects. Um, I would say my one piece of advice going into the selection process as a whole is just keep in mind that, you know, not only are the companies or faculty choosing you, but you're choosing them. So it's a two way street. And, you know, if and I think it's the same with job interviews, too, it's you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. So I would just keep that in mind and really, you know, if you have to evaluate if you're a good match, um, ask a lot of questions. I, whenever I was indecisive between the two, I sent an email to both um, advisors asking a list of questions. So don't be afraid to take up their time and ask questions to make sure, you know, it's a good fit for your project. Thank you, Lauren. Shane? Yeah, um, something pretty similar to what Lauren says previously. So stay in touch with a capsule advisor, either PhD candidates or professor uh, during the picking stage and also express your questions about specific areas of the project and concerns so that you have a pretty comprehensive understanding of all. And <clears throat> do a comparison with the, the, do a comparison between the projects and your career goal or your personal interests because you are doing the project for the the whole like one year and you definitely want to do something that can excite you that can push you forwards right so yeah thank you thanks shane billy yeah um so i would agree with what lauren said because um not it's not only they're interviewing you but you're also interviewing them so you want to make sure that uh the project that you you want to do is actually uh like you will be willing to commit it to to it for a total of 10 months so i would just suggest you to like email the capsule advisors or even uh set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them to actually uh, express your your concerns or anything related to the project so that you can understand more about the projects that you will be doing in the future. Thanks, Billy. Brian? I would say make sure you come prepared to the info fair more than anything else. Beforehand, I think it's really important to, well, the info fair itself should not be where your journey kind of starts. I think beforehand, it's really important to look at all the projects and then kind of narrow down the list. And then during the info fair, the faculty is really good about informing you which sessions go on at what time. And a lot of these sessions, as Lauren said, should be used to ask them a lot of questions or talk and have them talk a little bit more in depth about the project. And as Billy and Lauren said, it gives you the ability to kind of catch the vibe of the advisors and the workload ahead of you for the next 10 months. Thank you, Brian. Flora? Um, I would say like uh, the the same thing like beforehand research is really important because a lot of things are happening in like uh two or three days so some of the time can have conflicts with your personal schedule with uh, or like with other teams introduction so you need to pick like what you are most interested in to make sure like you attend all the um introduction or like the info session that you are most interested in. Thank you, Flora. Ethan? I think uh, everyone here said some really good stuff, but I would say one thing too is, as you can see, I'm like a bioengineer with a lot of mechanical engineers on a project. I would say be, um, don't be afraid to look outside of your major. Um, if you find projects that might be relevant to you or that you find interesting, I think it's important to really take time to read through that entire list of spreadsheet with all the uh, doc uh, documentation regarding all these projects, because you might be surprised, you might find a project that you really jive with that is outside of your major, and that shouldn't be a reason for you not to go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Sadant? My simple piece of advice would be that to put in the number of hours that's required to choose your choose your capstone that you'd want to work with, because sadly or gladly, uh, you'd be sticking around with the same capstone for nine months. So you want to make sure that this is something that you really want to work with. And so in addition to what others have mentioned, 
you can also reach out to alumni who worked on these capstone projects and get their feedback on each of these projects. Thank you, Sadant. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up the panel questions so that we can ensure that we have enough time for a Q&A. So this last question is for Brian, Shane, and Lauren. And the question is, how has the Capstone Project helped you grow your leadership skills? So let's start with Brian. So I've never worked in such a diverse group, let alone a group of this size before. So it really forced me to broaden and hone a lot of my leadership skills. And as I mentioned before, I came from a pretty small college. So I think this Capstone really helped me put into perspective how essential communication is in industry and really large teams. And since we all have very different backgrounds, it's super interesting learning to leverage each other's skills and try to improve in areas that I lack in. For example, watching Billy work his controls magic on his little prototype and me trying to understand it is really cool and fascinating because I kind of get to dip my toes into the work that he does. And the capstone overall gives us the opportunity to apply a lot of the leadership skills the program teaches us in the 295 and 270 classes as mentioned before. Thank you, Brian. Shane? Yeah, so personally, I'm doing the model predict predictive control part of the project. So I'll be a leader of my part specifically, uh, working with the stakeholders. So I need to propose my solutions, evaluate them to achieve uh, the agreements. You know, this can involve delegating the tasks, managing the timelines and the budgets and making decisions that might affect the overall direction of the project. So um, through this process, like all, all of us can develop our decision making and problem solving skills, which are also important the aspects of the leadership. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. Lauren? Yeah, so I mean, at the core of the Capstone project, as mentioned before, is innovation, technology, and collaboration. And with the Capstone project, I think it's a really cool challenge for us as engineers to not only solve a problem, but kind of have to define the problem and design what the project will look like. Um, specifically in my project, I'm working on direct air capture, which is a carbon removal process, and we're looking to optimize it. Um, and so there's really no clear solution. Um, and I think that deviates from a lot of engineering classes where your problem is clearly defined with, you know, assumptions listed. And it's really helped my leadership skills and communicating not only with my team, but my advisors, um, you know, what my goals are, what my thinking process, thought process is. Um, I think a big thing in Capstone is not only building your technical skills, but also you know, being able to communicate what you're thinking and how the team as a whole can move forward and achieving your goals. Thank you, Lauren. And can you quickly share with us how many team members are on your team? Yeah, there are four of us total. Thank you, Lauren. All right, on that note, we're gonna go ahead and conclude with the formal panel questions. And so as my colleague has shared in the chat, this is the preliminary list of capstone projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and just chat that there for you take, to take a look at um, as well at your own time. And so I just want you to be aware that the project title list that you see right now may change slightly due to the experiential nature of the project, but we do anticipate adding a little more faculty-led projects and industry projects. So very uh, important reminders. I know that so many of you have asked about where, where's the link to the new admin website. So it's right there, right in front of you. So I encourage you all to please check that out because we have a plethora of really great resources for you to learn more about the Berkeley MN program, including our curriculum, our timeline, uh, career information, capstone information. And then between now, well, starting yesterday and up until April 5th, we have a number of exciting virtual events happening. So please make sure to go to that web page to uh, sign up for the uh, Zoom links. And then on April 6th, we have an optional on-campus visit day. 
and we have a QR code there for you. So you can conveniently scan it and register if that's something that you're interested in doing. And then on April 15th, please don't forget to, um, you know, that's the deadline to make a decision to accept our offer. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and lead into uh, audience questions and answers. So please feel free to raise your hand. My colleagues, uh, Jennifer and Lauren, and also Ashley are here to help with the questions. So, um, you can also chat your questions in the chat box. And uh, Lauren and Jennifer, if you see questions, if you could please read it out loud. Yep, I can go ahead. Yeah, so, and you go ask, how does the capstone workload change over the course of the year? Does the capstone structure mitigate spikes in work or do you, or does there tend to be big crunch periods? If anyone wants to take this. <laughs> Okay, I can take this one. Um, yeah, so your capstone project a lot of the time is up to you and your team on, you know, the schedule and workload. Um, I would say there's definitely, you know, some wiggle room to where if you have a week with a lot of midterms or projects due, um, you can kind of scale back on, you know, the time spent on your capstone. But I would say in order to achieve those goals at the, in the final semester, it's really important to be really consistent and create a schedule that works for you and your team um, to work together, you know, definitely having meetings every week, if not more often. Um, but yeah, I would say just rely on your on your teammates, communicate, you know, when you're available, when you're not, but consistency is is really key. Okay, I'll take the um, next question. It says, would more projects be available for BioE? They are limited on the list. So I want to, I just checked the list to make sure, but I want to encourage all of you to make sure you're looking at the titles. So for example, Hannah Stewart is a mechanical engineering professor, but most of her projects are very similar uh, related to BioE, similar to um, Grace O'Connell. So want to make sure you also are looking at like kind of the title because a lot of our faculty also do interdisciplinary work um, and it's not siloed within the department. Next question, um, will this program help in pursuing a PhD? I can answer, but also want to make sure if any of the, the students have a response. Okay, I will take it. Um, I, um, yeah, so Ashley answered. So a handful of our image graduates go on to pursue their PhD each year, um, but most um, move into industry. That is a perfect answer. Um, I'm gonna throw this to the students because I don't have a good read on this. What's the balance between the capstone project and the technical electives like? I mean, it looks like the credits are balanced more towards courses. Does this accurately reflect the time spent? This one. Um, basically, I would say that's entirely up to your schedule, especially because the capstone, as Lauren mentioned, it's pretty much defined by you and what you want to get out of it and even your stakeholders. But the balance is pretty much entirely up to you to make time of the resources available. But me personally, I feel like it's pretty balanced overall, but it varies for each student. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, the other one is, um, how do you determine the leadership of the project? What if more than one teammates wants to be a leader? Um, I'll say my comment and if the students wanna think about it. So there's this really great thing called rotational leadership that happens in industry. Um, so depending on your interest and in, you know, sometimes one student might be really busy with certain courses, and so that's a perfect time to kind of change over leadership, but would love to hear from you all how you do that in your capstones. 
yeah, I can add a little bit on that one. So you are kind of like divided to different parts on the overall project and you can be basically a leader of your specific parts overall. So everyone can practice their leadership in total for the project, yeah. Um, I'll also like to add, I think um, there are different types of leaders that can definitely emerge um, within groups, especially bigger ones. Um, for example, I think like for me, I might not be the most technical and knowledgeable about mechanical engineering stuff, but I definitely want to take and I have taken more leadership in like logistical things like finance, like taking care of the finance of our team and things like that. And obviously other people will excel at, you know, working on specific technical things like Billy's really good on controls. So I think like in specific projects, depending on how complex they are, there are many different avenues where you can develop your leadership in tandem with other people. I see a raised hand from Ash. Ash, go ahead and ask your question. Ash, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. It's hard to hear you. Do you mind uh, chatting your question in the chat? Okay. Is it good now? A little bit. Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, okay. Sorry about my mic. Okay. So, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, you all here? And I have a question regarding uh, the project. Uh, it seems like it seems like the the companies that we're working with. Our, our customers and suppliers. So basically, my question is, are they treating us as actual engineers or as actual students? I mean, that's a, that's a big difference nowadays. <laughs> Ash, I'm sorry, it's very hard to hear you. Do you mind just chatting it in the chat box? And we'll get that answered. All right. While he, Ash does that, we do have just a few minutes remaining for the Q&A portion, but I do want you to go ahead and still ask your questions in the chat, and we can do an FAQ and post it later on the capstone section of our new admin website. And also, I encourage you to ask your questions on the Whova app. So um, Thomas, who is our other capstone student ambassador has created a capstone discussion thread. So you can go ahead and ask your questions there to Thomas and to Lauren. Actually, Claire, can you hear me clearly now? Is okay. it better now? Okay, that's fine. Yes, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, so my question is, it seems like the companies we're working with are our customers, not suppliers. And are they treating us as engineers or engineering students? I think that's a question that I would lead to uh, Jennifer or our panel to help answer. Okay. I can take this. Um... I'd say, especially since we're working with the company, I would say they treat us as engineers. Like we are basically doing their work, but it, not doing their work, but like doing work for the company. And, but it's very much like they understand that it's a school project. So we still very much have advisors that we check in, but it does feel like we are part of the company and doing a project work that you would probably see in industry. So we're basically following the, the actual industry standard when we're uh, proceed with the project, right? Because um, it may it may involve the uh, the confidentiality agreement or cost analysis or stuff like that. When you find a supplier, you ask for a quote or something like that. Yeah, correct? so so that depends what you mean by industry standard, but from our standpoint, we did sign an NDA, so we can't disclose too much of the nitty gritty of what we've done. But in this turn, in the sense of what you're saying about sourcing parts, like that is correct that we do have to get quoted, and 
say we're working with the company, but all the finances and stuff are directed towards our advisors. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And also, I want to quickly add that Jennifer mentioned in the chat, it depends on your project and who is involved. So this is a great question to ask the advisors during the August info fair. All right, everyone, that concludes the Q&A portion of this presentation. And also, can, Claire, can I say one more thing? Yeah, Sorry. Of course, Jennifer, go ahead. There's been several questions around interdisciplinary nature. Do you have to be on the project that you apply to, like the department? That you do not. So I think across the board, that's why I want to make sure when you're looking at the preview, it's what you're interested in and what the needs are of the project. So um, you don't have to work on a project necessarily in your department. So just want to make sure that's clear. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. And I want to also thank our panelists that are here today for speaking to our new admitted students. And so I just want to go ahead and say that this is the uh, end of our formal presentation. Thank you all for being here today. And also thank you to those who are listening. Go Bears. <laughs>